Now, I just completed a recording for the power of messaging when we're selling, but I think the same principles hold true when we're coaching. I cannot tell you when I've had customers and friends and associates and my peers tell me of some of these ideas of how they've implemented them and the dramatic impact. I'm not theatrically sharing that. I'm really not. But when you get something, let's think about something. You go home, it's been a long day, you go to your mailbox, you pull your mail out, there's a postcard, there's another postcard, there's a electric bill, a phone bill, a gas bill, but there's a powder blue envelope that's hand addressed. Which one are you opening first? And what if it's a note from your boss saying, you know what, haven't spent much time with you, just wanted to let you know, I recognize the things you're doing and they're greatly appreciated. Now, some of you might be thinking, geez, that never happens to me. That's why we need to do it. <laughs> and let me ask you, are you doing it? And so I have a client out in Denver who literally swears by this. He swears by the fact that we need to do this because he was a cynic when it came to coaching. Now he uses cards almost every single week with his employees. So let's say our coaching objective is to motivate, inspire, reflect, and facilitate teamwork. Now, certainly there's more coaching objectives. Let's just use those for a second. Now, each one of these have an inherent challenge, right? They each have an inherent challenge. So when we think about motivating and inspiring, and we think about reflecting, and then we think about teamwork, that might mean different things to different people. That's why the power of the personal message is so valuable. So, Let's say you've got someone who's really struggling and maybe they just lost out on a promotion. And what if you were to write them a card and send it home and say, look, I know you're disappointed in the, um, the job that you're up for, but I want to let you know I think you're a superstar. These things will last, not forever, but the last. It provides perspective. Because guess what happens when someone doesn't get a job internally? And nobody says anything. That silence gets loud. They start to think, geez, does anybody care? And of course they care. That's why you're up for the job. But that's how sometimes human beings react. One of the most powerful things you can do is send an email, but copy the powers to be and praise that employee. Look, we all talk about email, clutters our lives, clutters our inboxes, it's too much, I can't keep up, I get it. But what if there were a way to use email to your advantage? And you know what happens when an employee sees an email about a job well done and sees that the powers to be upper level management were copied? Do you know what happens to the trust of that employee towards the manager? It exponentially explodes. Now, let's say you work in an organization that has distributors or that you're going to praise somebody from another department. There is nothing better than sending a letter to that employee's boss, praising them on a specific job well done. Now, you do not carbon copy the employee. You hope that that client or that distributor or that other department's leadership will bring the employee in and say, look, Joanne, I just got a really nice note from you from Tim or whatever the case might be, but send a letter to the boss. And here's the other thing. You're spreading your leadership gospel. You're spreading the things that you need to spread to be a great leader. That's a reflection of you. Video email. Now, I just covered this. One of the products that I'm looking at right now is Bomb. Bomb. And one of the things that when someone sees you talking and you're talking to that person and say, Sarah, I just wanted to send you this very quickly. I'm off site today. Um, I heard about the great thing that you did for our customer and I wanted to personally thank you. I know we haven't spent as much time together as I would like, but I want to tell you how proud I am of you. When you hear that, when you see that, when you feel that, what are you doing? You're motivating. You're inspiring. You're encouraging them to continue to be a great teammate. Now, I suggested this 
at one of our client sites about two years ago. And quite frankly, I kind of forgot about it because we're always coming up with different ideas and different ways of doing things. But I actually had a manager take this so seriously. And what he did is he would literally have a thought of the day, but he would leave it early in the morning or late at night knowing that the system would timestamp it. And it would also be the first voice message that everybody would hear when they would come in. So what do people typically do at the end of the day? They clear out their voicemail. What do they do at the start of the day? They come in and they get their emails going. But what happened is it was a little bit of a disrupt. People would see the light flashing. Geez, I've got a voicemail. Who's that from? And it would be from their boss. Today, the person who has the most phone calls, the person who can have the greatest wow story will get a free gift card, uh, XYZ. And if you happen to hear somebody who does a great phone call, you have to go up and tell them that they're wonderful. And this manager took this so seriously. He said, Tim, the culture changed. We started to laugh early in the morning. And then I started to leave jokes early in the morning. Clean jokes, but I got people laughing. So you start off your day laughing. And let's say you happen to do phone work. Guess what's going to happen to your tone of your voice after you're done laughing? You're going to sound more pleasant. You can also leave personal messages. John, I left early yesterday. I had a couple of meetings off site. I heard about your opportunity. I wanted to tell you that is awesome. I've also sent this voice mail message to the CEO and he may be calling you as well. What does that do? That invigorates. The text message. You know, it's so funny. We often think about text messages as this thing that the young people do. And I think about my college and, uh, you know, when I went to school and we didn't have this, but my son who's in college, it's the way we communicate. And my daughter who just visited him, you know, can text me and say, by the way, dad, I got here okay. And the point being is text messaging can really serve as an advantage. But boy, what we have tried to do, especially in recent years, we got to get people to put their phones away. But what if you were sending out text? What if you used a service like we do where you can automate the delivery of text messages? So when people are sneaking a peek under their desk about who texts them during the day, look, that's going to become a part of our culture. And I know some people allow it, some people prohibit it. But I'm also telling you there might be an advantage in doing it because what if a text message came across and said, the next person who makes the most phone calls in the next hours gets XYZ. The person who can wow a customer in the customer service department uh, will free, receive a free day off from work. What if you could use the text messaging as a way to get people to become inspired, motivated, to act great te like great teammates. So we had a client who actually would send out a random act of kindness challenge. Whoever in the next two hours can perform a unique random act of kindness for another teammate across departmental lines will get a free day, half day off from work. And what people would do is they would they'd find a way to be successful. Not everyone would participate, and that's okay. But what would happen is we would facilitate teamwork. What do we typically do? We tell people they got to become better teammates. And I think one of the most powerful things that we can do, and we did this at a company in West Bend, Wisconsin, at a manufacturing firm by the name of the Gale uh, Company. And we actually had clients come in and they would actually send in notes, but we actually started to bring them in in person. But one of the things that they would do is they would tell us of a particular employee who was servicing them well, who was getting back to them on time. And what we would do is read that note, but we would read it in front of the whole department. Because guess what happens? It gets people reflecting. So the people in the room who weren't doing the things that someone in the room was being accommodated for, they would start to think about, you know what, I need to do that stuff. And the power of the message from the customer's mouth is invaluable. If you happen to get a letter and you can read it at a staff meeting, it is not to admonish other people. It is to praise those who did a job well done. So remember, when we're coaching, use your messaging. It saves time, and I promise you, it will motivate, inspire. It will get people reflecting and acting like great teammates. You combine this with one-on-one, -on -one, group, peer-to-peer, -peer, other forms of coaching, you will accelerate talent development. Good luck.